Hello, friends. S Y N C. Pow! How do you like that? Synced up the chat. First thing out of the gate. Duke the Bump is on a is on the ball tonight. I was going to say I'm on a roll, but I'm on a, not on a roll yet because I just started. The Bump has event starting. Shovel Knight livestream. Technically, it already started. Steam is a few seconds behind my clock, apparently. But, uh, yeah, there's no one in the chat room yet, but I figured I would go on ahead and sync it up just in case. And, uh, in Monday's stream, we just made it past pretty much the halfway point of the game. Uh, we beat the fifth boss. Is that right? One, two, three, four, yes, five bosses. And I need to go back to town to unload some of this fat loot, meaning I have to give a musical stroll to this guy, actually give three of them to this guy, or lady, I, I guess the, there could be a bard under that helmet, or there could be a lady bard under that helmet, and uh, I have another mule ticket, see this is the second to the last one. And I also have 9,000 gold to spend. Oh hey, there's cost. What's up? Alright. Do I have a relic I can buy? I don't remember if I bought one in the last couple stages or not. Wait. Oh, okay. So, I bought all the relics he has available, but not the last one. Holy shit, I did not know that there would be a stream. Yeah, it's kind of last minute. So, sorry to everyone. I know it's hard to... To make these streams when I uh, when I don't plan them in advance, but I wasn't sure if I would be able to stream tonight or not, so I didn't I didn't announce it ahead of time. So uh, yeah, as I always say, the best way to get updated when the stream starts is to uh, follow me on Twitch, you, and you can get an email or join the Steam community, uh, and you get a pop-up notification on Steam. I was going to head off to bed, but it seems I will stay awake for a bit longer. Yeah, I figure this will go uh, about two hours, like the last one. By the way, now that I, op I opened up the next town, there's a shortcut I can take to quickly travel between the two towns. I simply adore ballistic physics. Well, who doesn't? Ballistic physics are the best. Alright, can I, can I go this way? No. I can only go... I can leave the stage by heading right, or I can climb down this ladder. And, uh, yeah, this ladder wasn't here before, but now I can I can get up to the catapult. Alright, is there anything here that I want to spend my money on? I think there is one more shovel upgrade that, that I can get. It's just the one that lets you dig piles faster, so it's not really big deal or anything, but uh, might as well get it since I have nothing nothing else to spend my money on. And I think I want to stick with the armor I have, the dynamo mail. None of the other armor is really that useful. Oh hey Namajim, what's up? I haven't seen you around the stream in a while. Yeah, I, I, I've tried the mail of momentum before, I, I don't really like it. Like, I, I've I don't know, I've fallen in pits because of this mail multiple times. Because uh I'm just not used to the uh not used to the physics. So yeah, I'll stick with the dynamo mail. Alright, I have a couple of uh bonus levels. Well not bonus levels, but uh kind of transitional levels before I go to the actual next stage. I, f I forgot that another one of these night levels popped up later on. I forgot about all of them except uh Except the first one. Just got internet back down here. Oh, you didn't have internet? Oh, I, I didn't know about that. That sucks. All right, so I'll go ahead and uh, and see what see what this level is. Oh yeah, that's right. I remember this. This level is uh, very dark. Let's charge up a shot and. See if I can take this guy out quickly. Hopefully I can. 
I'm not going to jump over for their gems because I don't really need the money and I don't really want to risk falling into a pit. It's been down for weeks. Oh really? Wow, that sucks. I, I didn't. I mean, I know you weren't. I knew you weren't on Skype, but uh, I didn't know he didn't have internet at all. Oh man, there's a mole in that pile. Dang it. I should have seen that coming. This is not a level that I've played multiple times. Alright, let's uh, give that another go. I'm not really going to worry about the money I lost because, like I said, money is not really an object at this point in the game. Alright, I'm not going to... Uh, I think I'm just going to try to get through this as quickly as possible just to clear this off the board. So I don't have to worry about running into it. Oh crap, there's a big old skeleton up there. Okay, let's uh, bring out the uh, the fire wand. Actually, I might just skip past the skeleton. Yeah, no, nah, not worth the hassle, in my opinion. Alright, and we have one of those special stages that you, you can only get through with one of the uh, relics. In this case, I, need, I needed the knuckler before I could come here. This isn't quite as uh, difficult as the uh, the phase locket one. Not that the phase locket level was that that difficult, but uh, I did die a couple times on that one. You have to make sure you're close enough to those sand piles before you use the dust knuckle, because if you're too far away, then uh, then it's, it's not going to connect as I learned the hard way multiple times and I'm just going to kind of cheese my way past these guys okay the music's quite catchy I'd say yeah the music in this game is fantastic oh that's what I was saying about how you need to be close enough uh, try that again it kinda of seems like bone saw right now Don't think I'm familiar with that. Right. Didn't really need to waste mana using the phase locket there. Alright, so I have to bounce. Nope, did not time that right. You have any hints for me, horseman? There's no way to punch through. Wish I could just dash through all this dirt. Well, can't help you. I only have one dust knuckle. Why do Americans call sausage sausages hot dogs? Well, we don't call all sausages hot dogs. That's just a specific type of sausage. Uh, usually made of. Uh, like mostly processed chicken and pork and stuff. Um, most uh, most sausages we still refer to as sausage. Usually uh, a hot dog means a sausage in in like a, a roll, like a uh, a bread container. Hot dogs are really good, by the way. But why hot dog? Well, when they were invented, uh, I, I believe it goes back to like a comic strip that somebody wrote, uh, like back in the twenties or thirties or something or something. And in the comic strip, the artist drew a dachshund, that like the dog, like a wiener dog, uh, in a hot dog bun. And then the captions just said hot dog, and I, I believe that's where the term originates. Uh, hello, Inzu Doragna, or Taz, I, as I think he likes to be called. Oh yeah, that's right, I still have to do the Hall of Champions. This level's cool. Alright, let's go on ahead and uh, give the Black Knight what for. 
and uh, uh, and I will do the Hall of Champions. Yeah, no, they weren't they they weren't made of dogs. Uh, it's just a uh, just a nickname because uh, because they look like Doctions, or they don't look like Doctions, but they're they're kind of comparable. The hot dog is actually based on the Frankfurter. Yeah, that's that's the specific kind of sausage, the Frankfurter sausage. I'm tired of the charade. Charades are fun. A ruinous path. That's another good word. Ruinous. It's a very Kefka-esque laugh. laugh. Like uh, Kefka from Final Fantasy VI. Not to be confused with Kafka-esque. Pretty, uh. Oh, yeah. I forgot you can bat, bat the knight's projectile back and forth. Of course, he was pretty good at, uh, at hitting it back that time. First time you fight the Black Knight, he's kind of a pushover, but uh, his tactics are, uh, are, are, are a little tougher to deal with this time around. And he was just digging glowing spheres out of the dirt. This area must be irradiated or something. Holy crap, that got fast at the end there. Haven't you wrecked this fool several times at this point? No, I think this is the, just the second time I fought him. Might be the third, I don't remember. All right. Uh, there's also a shortcut here if you want to get, go back to town this way by uh, by hopping in this catapult. I just have to ruin that kid's fun every time. All right. So the Hall of Champions is a cool little bonus area, and. Uh, I believe. Oh yeah, it costs five thousand gold to get in here, but I I have that. I believe that this area was added specifically for the Kickstarter backers because one of the uh, backer rewards, I think, was that uh, you could have your likeness put in the game somewhere. And I, th I think that's what this whole area is for. But it's also a cool, uh, just a cool area mechanically. Like there are all these portraits in the background, and they're uh, they're kind of dim until I can turn the lights on in this place. And to turn the lights on, all you have to do is kill all the ghosts. And the way you kill a ghost, well, ghosts hate light, so obviously. Dang it. Obviously all you have to do is bat this light orb around a little bit and the uh, the rays will, will take the ghosts out. So yeah, all kinds of portraits in the background here. I don't know if these are all Kickstarter backers. Like, I'm pretty sure this dragon creature didn't back the Kickstarter. Although it might have. Uh, yeah, which achievement? Oh, uh, bouncy on on the hoop. Yeah, I got that one. Shouldn't a black knight be badass? Yeah, the black knight gets progressively more badass the more times you fight him. So yeah, uh, killing these ghosts can actually be a little bit tricky because if you hit them with your shovel, they kind of phase out of existence and they become temporarily invulnerable. Oh yeah, that's right. I wonder if I can use my alchemist coin to make this part easier. So I need to jump there, jump there, jump there. Yeah, there we go. Kind of like the uh, bubble lead from Mega Man 2. You can place it on the ground to determine where invisible pits are. I blew your secret hiding spot. Ain't no ghost coming in here, buddy. 
chill out. <laughs> Alright, so the ghosts don't respawn, so that one I killed will stay dead. Really good music in this part, too. It's just that right... Just the right kind of spooky... Castlevania type vibe to it. Or Ghosts and Goblins type vibe. More Ghosts and Goblins than, than Castlevania, I guess. Let there be light. Very nice little portraits. I wonder what it costs to get your picture in the game. Because this would make like a cool Twitter avatar or something too. Now I do too. Or now I know too. I already knew that. Lead like lead, like in leader. Uh. I mean, that's one interpretation. No one really knows if it's supposed to be lead or lead. I mean, I think bubble lead makes a little bit more sense, because, you know, it's like a bubble bullet. Like, you know, eat lead. And bubble lead doesn't really make much sense. Music in other areas is way better. Well, I mean, this isn't my favorite track or anything, but it's a pretty solid one. But yes, the lead versus lead debate is one of the uh, one of the nerd debates of the uh, of the ages. Oh man, this guy's going to be tricky to see. It's it's a lot harder when you have the uh, the ground spark too, because I keep hitting him with the ground spark, and uh, he's going invulnerable before the light can get him. So I'm going to take a hit on purpose, just so I don't have the the ground spark. All right, that took care of him leads you through those areas. Uh, I mean, I, I can see that argument. I mean, I, I don't care what people call it. I mean, I see the way I see it. Either one is perfectly acceptable. I think there's another... Yeah, there's another bubble over here. So I have no reason to, to try to get that one over that barrier. Alright, boss time. I like this boss a lot. Just getting hits on it with these with these orbs is really satisfying. Especially when you uh when you can keep this thing in the air and kinda of bounce it up high enough to to get him. Man, that looked like a hit. Screw you. This fight reminds me of Castle of Illusion for some reason. Just something about the uh, the way the boss keeps teleporting around and uh, just the look of the castle in general. R reminds reminds me of the uh, the Miserable fight. And like you ha you have to figure out which one is the real one, like in Castle of Illusion. That was a good boss fight too. Dang it. I, I don't think I can even kill these projectiles or those those green ghosts or anything. Pretty sure all damage in this fight has to be done with the uh, the light orbs. Oh wait, I can well, I can sort of temporarily make the ghost disappear. But I got him. The music is very Castle of Illusion. Yeah, yeah, I guess it was kind of similar. Yeah, I was pretty hot, pretty thoughtless. 
That's a risky run, paying for something in advance before you know the details. Subtle social commentary there. 50 gold? Holy crap. So yeah, it costs 5,000 to get in there, but obviously you come out with much more money than, than you paid in. Alright, so, uh, Tinker Knight or Polar Knight? I want to save Tinker Knight for after Polar Knight because I like this level a lot more, personally. I mean, it's, it's a freaking ice level, so by default that makes it the worst level in the game. Uh, I, I guess I'll wait to turn that in. No reason to go back to town now, so yeah. Polar Knight first, get that out of the way. Not that this, not that this is a bad level. It's just the worst level. It's the least good level. Oh wait, there's a thing here. Oh, just a gem, okay. I'm trying not to miss any of the music scrolls in this playthrough. Like, the first time I played the game, I got all of the music scrolls, except one, just naturally through, uh, through, you know, through natural discovery. But, uh, I might, in, in my, uh, in my commentary be, be distracted and, and miss some of the, uh, some of the secrets, so apologies if that happens. Oh yeah! One dig. Can you shovel the snow bushes? No, I don't think so. I'm not really sure if I ever tried, come to think of it. Snow bushes. Oh, these? No. No. Can't shovel these. I don't know, this level looks pretty cool, says Bippo Ernesti. Hey Bippo, haven't seen you around in a while either. I get it, cool because the, the level's made of ice and snow, which is traditionally very cool. Like literally in terms of temperature, not in terms of uh, the slang definition of cool. So you see it's a play on words, it's like a double meaning there. It's a, it's a pretty, pretty solid joke. No in the first screen. Oh, I don't know. Man, that secret was the bomb. See, I, I did a similar thing there, Bippo. Using, you know, the literal definition in addition to the uh, the slang definition, so uh, so it's a double double meeting there too. We're pretty good joke masters, me and Bippo. Hey Duke, I meant to check your streams more often, but I always forget, and when I remember, it's already over. Um, yeah, uh, that's fine. I mean, you know, you're not obligated to, to watch them, obviously, but I appreciate you coming out. It's good to see you. Oh yeah, with a charge up shot you can actually kill these things through their shield, which is pretty nice. Oh, I hate these. These Drake things. I mean, these aren't bad because they're in a uh, specific pattern, but a little later on there will be some Drakes that that really fly erratically and kind of kind of mess you up. Hippo, you got him on this horrible pun kick. Oh, I've been on a horrible pun kick since the day I learned to talk. It's sort of my jam. I mean, I don't think these even really count as puns, because puns at least take a little bit of thought. I found secret! Oh, do I want to risk that for a chest? No, I don't. So, uh, hasn't really been any updates to Abyss Odyssey lately, which is kind of a bummer. Like, I checked the other day, and the, uh, the mask was still, 
about halfway destroyed, just like it was the last time I streamed it. But the uh, developer said something about like taking a break from the game, like a short break of like a few days in the forums. So, you know, I, I guess you know that's fine. I mean, I got my ten dollars worth out of Abyss Odyssey, that's for sure. Hey Duke, Morse is over here right now. He says, hey. Oh, hey Morse, what's up? So, th the next game on my radar... Well, I've been playing Tomb Raider, because I picked that up on the cheap during the Steam sale. And, uh, I've been enjoying that. It's, it's not... It's, it's not the best game i ever played, but for what it is, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, next game I want to pick up will probably be Crypt of the Necro Dancer. That weird rhythm roguelike game. I, I think that just came out today. That game looks super awesome. I heard I, I also heard it's super hard, so that's uh Oh these these bushes? No, you you can't dig these. Secrets within secrets. I just heard about it today. It sounds really fun. It says Missy. Yeah, it, it looks awesome. And there's an RP there's like a JRPG that just came out recently too, called like Tales of the Sky or something like that. Something. Yeah. See, this is the Drake that I don't like because you can't kill him by pogoing. You can only kill him with uh, a shovel shot to the face. And the, the way he flies in that pattern makes it really difficult to, uh, to hit him. Crap, I was trying to do a charge up shot, but did not charge it up fast enough. Have I ever tried Payday? It'd be interesting to see me and Moore's co-op. I haven't tried it, but, uh, Grimith, uh, a Let's Player and streamer, did a huge stream of it recently. He played the game for, like... 12 hours straight or something, it was nuts. And I watched a lot of that, and it looked pretty fun. He's playing with uh, two other people. I mean, it's, it looks kind of like a uh, like a Left 4 Dead or something like that. A, a co-op first-person shooter, only in, instead of zombies, you're doing like a heist. Like you're robbing banks or, and robbing jewelry stores and stuff, and uh, yeah, I, 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 like I heard of it before I watched that stream, but I, I never really looked into it or anything. But yeah, it looks pretty cool. I really hate the, these uh, these snow clouds floating above the spikes. You have to kind of touch them to make them fall, and I, I always worry that uh, worry that I'm going to hit the spikes before the snow does. I normally loathe to play first-person shooters, but the co-op is pretty great. Well, I like first-person shooters, you know, when the controls are good and everything. Are you playing with a controller or a keyboard and mouse? Because if it plays good with the keyboard and mouse, then uh, then I'm probably in. Oh yeah, the Warhorn. This is a uh, situationally useful item. Uh, it can clear out... Oh yeah, that's right. So give me an opportunity to demonstrate. Clears out all the enemies in a, a pretty big radius, but it, it also costs 20 mana to use, which is obviously far and away more than any of the other items. So, if you're not going to need any mana for a while, and you're in a, a sticky situation, then uh, it's, it's uh, good for that. Keyboard and mouse. That's cool. I'm not usually very good at like modern style first person shooters, but uh, but I'd probably be willing to give it a shot. Like I like first person shooters where 
you can hold all the weapons. And, uh, you can just press, like, the number key 1 through 8 to, uh, to use whichever we weapon you want. You don't have to choose, like, a quote-unquote loadout b before the, the, the thing starts. But I, I guess for the way games like Payday are designed, the loadout style makes more sense. I think I'll leave that checkpoint intact, actually. The Payday 2 official Steam group posted recently to celebrate the amount of members they're offering... That to celebrate the amount of members they're offering the first Payday for free to keep on October 18th. Oh, that's awesome. Wait, to everyone or just people who own Payday 2? Because if it's, if it's everyone, then yeah, I'll def definitely check that out. Oh yeah, that's right. You can't pogo these guys either. Well, I think uh, Mr. Wand is the best way to handle that situation. Wait a sec. Oh no. I shouldn't have killed that Drake. Wait. There wasn't a Drake. Oh, okay. I'm an idiot. This ladder keeps going up. Everyone who I think joins the Payday 2 group at least. Oh, that's cool. I will keep an eye out for that. Not to jinx it, but I'm doing pretty well on this level so far. I haven't taken a ton of damage. No deaths yet. I mean, I don't believe in jinxes, so... I should be fine. I know there's something over here. You're guarding precious treasure. Oh boy. I remember dying in this room before. Let's uh, let's switch it to the phase locker just to be on the safe side. Just in case I end up sliding when I don't want to. Alright, I won't worry about that. I don't believe in jinxes. I do believe in coincidences, though. Have I heard of or played Pure Solar? It was a JRPG that was re released on Sega CD by an indie studio in 2012. I thought it was a Genesis game. I didn't know it was Sega CD. I've heard of it. I've heard it was uh, pretty difficult. Crap. Damn, how did it... I don't know how I killed this guy the first time. I guess I used, uh, magic of some sort. There we go. I mean, it's cool that someone made a Genesis game, you know, in... in this decade. Sigh. I use a charge swing. Oh, that's right. I have better, uh, better range on that. Thanks for watching out, Koss. It was also released on XBLA as an HD version. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I do kind of miss JRPGs, but the last two JRPGs I tried to play, I, uh, I didn't finish. Like, I quit pretty early on into the game. I already got that music note, so no reason for me to go back down there. Not going down there for one gem. But yeah, I got, uh... Uh, Shin Megami Tensei 4 and Etrian Odyssey 4 for the 3DS. And both of them I enjoyed for a little while. And then eventually they just got too tedious and difficult for me. And I gave up on them. So I'm not sure if it was just those games that, that I had an issue with. Or if it's JRPGs in general that I'm, that I'm done with.
I think my issue with both of those games was that there really wasn't much of a story to speak of. Like there, there was kind of a story, but it was just in service of of the combat. Like I didn't really care about any of the characters or anything. And uh, when I play a JRPG, I kind of like to have something in there to break up the uh, you know break up the monotony. I mean, not that I'm saying that the JRPGs I like have amazing storylines or anything like that because they don't but there's something there to you know help help break the game up all right I think it's boss time let me uh, take a drink of water to prepare all right this boss has traditionally given me a lot of trouble I might have to use one of my one of my I cores on the polar night. Oh, these guys have a history. They're like old war buddies or something. Really like this guy's snow shovel. Like it's very apropos, and you know it just looks like a formidable weapon in the Polar Knight's hands. Like this perfectly innocent object just looks like a huge, you know, beacon of destruction. Crap. Oh yeah, I remember why I die so often on this boss. Because of the damn spikes. I mean, he does cover the spikes from time occasionally, but uh, wow. Okay, I uh, I handled that situation. Three of my favorite JRPGs are Persona 4, Skies of Arcadia, and Paper Mario. Yeah, I really like Persona 4. Uh, I haven't actually played it, but I watched the Giant Bomb Endurance Run. And yeah, that's a heck of a game. I'm considering getting a Vita TV when they come out, because they're relatively cheap, and I could play Persona 4 Golden. You know, finally have a chance to actually play the game instead of instead of just watch it. And there are a couple other Vita games I want to play that look pretty cool. All right, I think this is the last Wandering Warrior to fight. Oh man, it just uh, thundered. So, if the stream stops suddenly, it probably means my power went out. Duke, what is this giant bomb you're always talking about? Giantbomb.com. It's a website where people talk about video games, and uh, it is really awesome. Uh, you know, they post videos of, of games that come out, and there's a podcast that, that I listen to every week. It's my favorite uh, gaming related website. It's like a bomb, but bigger, says Bippo. Yes, exactly. That's exactly right, Bippo. The Phantom Striker. That's true, we have no quarrel. That's kind of a shitty reason to start a fight. Conflict is a reason unto itself. Alright, this guy's a little tricky, but uh, I should be okay. I'm using the pogo attack uh, to great effectiveness lately. Whoa! This guy teleporting like a madman. Oh, I get it. Phantom Striker, like a lightning strike. Aw, oh, man. Nearly dropped a bunch of one gold piece gems. 
Sometimes when you fight him, he drops like a lot more money than that. I'm not sure what the uh, what the distinction is. Maybe it depends on how much damage you take during the fight or something. This music is really is really good. I think. Yeah, I think so too. All right. Any reason to go back to town? Not really. I bought the uh, the war horn, so no reason to go back and talk to Chester. So I guess it is time to take on the Tinker Knight. This is probably my favorite boss in the game. This level is very reminiscent of Metal Man stage from Mega Man 2. Not just because of the conveyor belts, but because of the uh, the color scheme and the gears everywhere. Turn your music page in. Yeah, uh, I mean I will, but I just don't need the money right now. Crap. I like how there are different variations of this guy for pretty much every stage. Every time he throws a projectile with a slightly different pattern, and you know he's uh, his appearance is changed to match the uh, match the the level. Nope. Also looks partially inspired by Junk Man. Yeah, probably. Drunk Man was what? Seven? Mega Man Seven? Or was that like... Tr maybe that was like Trash Man or Garbage Man or something. I forget. It's been a while since I played any Mega Man game besides two. Or nine. Those, those little flying, uh, things, those things, they remind me of, uh, the enemy in Kirby that looks like just a, an unthreatening puffball or something, but as soon as you get, get too close to it, it, like, turns evil and intimidating and comes after you with sharp fangs. I think they're called, like, Scarfies or Scarflies or something. Crap. Eh, why not? Oh, I don't like these guys at all. I'm going to keep my distance and use a little wand action. Yeah, I'm not going to bother getting that music note. If you want to know where it is, here it is. I mean, you know, I already have the achievement for collecting all of them, and I don't want to risk dying yet again unnecessarily. Might be a chest over here, I forget. This is also a pretty dangerous area. Yep, there he is. Hello, Chester, what you got for me today? Oh yeah, the mobile gear. I think I used this item like twice in the entire game. Well, three times, counting the time you have to use it to get this. I mean, it's like the uh, the rush jet, no, the rush, the rush something or other. Okay, four times if you count this. I'll take note of that location, says Bippo. Oh ho! 
Oh yeah. Doesn't doesn't this thing also damage enemies? Yeah, it does. But uh, not until it starts moving, apparently. All right, I should probably get this uh, get this chicken down here. My health is getting a little low. Best way to deal with these is to just stand on the very tip and just let it kind of carry you out to the uh, the platforms. Of course, the, these uh, these flying candle things are kind of an annoyance. I don't know what those are. Torches? I mean, they're just rockets of some kind, but they look, uh, they look peculiar. Cheese! Okay. It's time to do some cheesin'. By cheesin', I mean some phasin'. Damn it! I was hoping I could time that so I landed on that platform. Huh? Oh, apparently I shouldn't have destroyed that checkpoint, huh? My, uh, my mouth is writing checks that my ass can't cash. Looks a bit like a penis, his costume. Well, I don't know what kind of penises you've been looking at, but, um, I do not see the resemblance. Alright, no reason to go back up there, right? I don't think so. So yeah, it shouldn't take me too long to get back to where I was. Really love the background in this level too. There's just so much going on. So many random unconnected uh pieces of non sequitur machinery. So wait, yeah, I only need one more relic. I, f I forget what the last one is. Probably something else I didn't use very many times. Hmm. Probably foolish of me to try this, but I'm kind of curious as to if there's anything over here besides just like a chest or something. Uh, worse than a chest, just a uh, just a gem. Oh well. This game doesn't have many infinitely respawning enemies, but um, the ones that are here sure are a pain in the butt. So this is where I died, right? No, no, no. That, that's where the uh, the gear was. I, I died a little further on. I'm gonna have to be careful. Ow. Yeah, I died because I, I misjudged one of these platforms. Alright, switch back to the phase locket just, just for a little bit of extra protection. No, 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 no! Okay. Like Medusa heads. Yeah, exactly. The worst enemy in Castlevania. Well, the worst enemy in Castlevania 1. I don't know about the other games. Well, I just hit a checkpoint, so I might as well get this one. Uh, what do I- oh yeah, I think I have to use this, activate it, and uh... Hmm. Alright, that wasn't that hard. Playing this very safely. 
Even though I just got a checkpoint. So I said I hated this, or I hated the Polar Knights level more than this one. I ended up dying here and not there. It's ironic, don't you think? That was close. Oh yeah, I hate these guys. I think I'm going to uh, bring out the horn for this one. Pow! Right in the everything. The worst enemy in Castlevania 2 was Castlevania 2. Yeah, the worst enemy in Castlevania 2, or the worst enemies, were the townspeople. Giving you totally misleading information. And otherwise, impenetrable game. You know, I always thought that the misinformation in Castlevania 2 was just because of a bad translation, but apparently it was like that in Japanese as well. I was listening to something recently where someone, uh, it was an episode of Retronauts, someone was talking about an interview they did with, uh, with, with somebody, a Japanese game developer, and uh, they were talking about Castlevania 2, and the guy said, I hated that game because the townspeople lied to you. Even though, obviously, he played it in Japanese. So, uh... So yeah, even in the original... The original game, the, uh... The townspeople were assholes. Um... Hmm. Interesting. Well, why would I go across there... To reach this, when I can... Just do this? Silly game. Grab that. I guess I could, uh... I could go off to the right there. Instead of backtracking. I have to deal with these guys, but... Not that big of a deal. But yeah, Castlevania 2 is just a terrible game all around. Now, Castlevania 3... That's a heck of a game. Probably... The best... Well, definitely the best of the original trilogy. One of the best... Pre-Symphony of the Night Castlevanias. All right, it is just about boss time. Oh, not yet. I forgot we have vertical scroll, vertical, sc vertical scrolling time first. This, this is bad. To teach you that, it's actually really clever. Well, I mean, it already taught me how to use the mobile wheel. Or whatever it's called, mobile mobile gear. Like there was already a situation where where you had to use it, so that was just uh, an optional thing. Dracula X was pretty good too. I haven't played that one. That that's the same as Run to a Blood, isn't it? Like Dracula X was just a different name for it. I've heard really good things about that game, but I haven't played it. Do do do, just taking a ride. Taking a ride on the train to Slowsville. Yeah, but not for vertical boost. Uh, yeah, I guess that's true. I thought there would be a secret here involving the mobile gear since I just picked it up, but uh, the mobile gear cannot go. Oh, I have to. I'd jump on it to activate it. Can't go under there. So, nothing special about that. It's just a place for these guys' gears to exit the, s the screen. Uh-oh. Might have been a little bit too generous with my mana there. Oh well. Alright, this time I'm ready for you, vertical scrolling. I'm... ready for you? Man, there are way more of these rockets than I remembered. I, I don't remember having to, to dodge so many of those. 
At least it's not through this whole area. That would have been pretty, pretty annoying. I want to switch to my phase locker just in case. Just in case I have to uh, pull a pull a hail mary or something. I could have gone after that mana, but I didn't want to risk being scrolled off the screen. Crap. Oh, that's right, the screen stops up here. That's good. This conveyor belt is not cooperating with me. I, uh, I thought, I thought there would be a little nub sticking out of the wall that that I could stand on. There usually was. In previous situations. All right, what's the best way to deal with this? Uh, I guess I'll just hit it with my shovel. It seems like a pretty good, uh, pretty safe bet. All right, I'm gonna break this because I'm pretty confident I'll be able to take out the Tinker Knight. Those weren't big words. How are those words big? Boy. Alright, fine. I'll fight you. Don't seem very well prepared for a fight, but uh that's what you want. I'll help you out. Ah, he's freaking out! Wrenches everywhere. Oh, that was an easy boss. Oh, that was an easy boss. Alright, this guy actually isn't as bad as he looks. The main thing you have to do is stay up on top here and not get hit by those missiles. The ones that are flying in three directions. As long as you can avoid getting hit by those, and just do your pogo attack, and not fall off when he does that. I mean, if you do fall, it isn't the end of the world, but, uh, easier if you don't fall. This is the boss that I got the defeated boss without taking any damage achievement on. Oh my god, that's amazing. Ooh, that boss? And yeah, that boss is really cool. No dreams tonight. Alright, one more night left to go. One more member of the Order of No Quarter. I'm going to be a little indulgent. Since I'm doing this for an audience, and I never really used this before, I'm going to be a little flashy by the gold armor. See, now I'm all glittery and doing all these somersaults. It's very impressive looking. Clearly the best armor in the game. Uh, okay. So I need uh, I need the relic you get in this level before I can do frigid flight. So flying machine, Alera propeller knight. Just two seconds to reconnect is an improvement, I guess. Is that reconnect to the chat, or are you having issues with the stream too? Because if the stream is giving you issues now, that sucks. I mean, it still sucks if it's just the chat room, but at least that's a known quantity of suck. Just the chat? Yeah. I figured. <gasps> that was that was not a good idea. Charging up a shot before I made that jump. A lot of people have trouble with the propeller knight level. I guess it is one of the tougher levels. There are a lot of bottomless pits here. 
since it's a, a sky level. And we have another variety of, uh, of this guy. Yeah, these projectiles. Pretty intelligent. Like, they, uh, they separate and explode at just the right point to hit me. Oh, oh man, I didn't even see that beetle. Oh yeah, this area has a lot of, like, wind. Which kinda sucks. It's like, uh, Ninja Gaiden 2. The wind levels in that game. And you have these guys who try to blow you into bottomless pits. Yeah, this level's... One of the more difficult levels, which makes sense since it's one of the last ones. I guess, uh... I guess I didn't appreciate, or I don't appreciate, the toughness of this level. Because right after this, you have to do the, uh, the tower. And compared to the tower, this is kind of a cakewalk. Like, the tower is super tough. I might be able to beat this game in the next hour, but just barely. Because the tower is a piece of work. Which, I mean, makes sense. You know, it's like Wily's Castle. Just a bunch of tough levels in a row. You do get checkpoints in the tower. It's not like Wily's Castle, where, where if you die, you have to go back to the beginning. Or I, I guess that's just if you lose all your lives. You have to- well, this game doesn't have lives, so obviously that's not a concern. You don't have to go back to the beginning just because you fail. Bunch of rats hiding behind the foreground. That's crafty. Crafty rats. Alright, uh, best way to deal with this is to just ignore that stuff over to the right. I mean, it's just a chest and some magic, so no big deal. Alright! It's the airship mini boss. This thing's cool. Make sure you jump when it, uh, when it hits the ground like that. Make sure you, make sure you time your jump, so... So, uh, you jump at the right time. You can, uh, hit these bonds back at it. Which is, which is pretty cool. Really like how this is bicycle powered. You know, this is some, uh... This is some advanced steampunk, steampunk technology. Uh, okay, checkpoint, which is good, because I'm getting pretty low on health. Ah, and a turkey! Or a chicken! A chicken and or turkey. Possibly... a pheasant. <laughs> Trollolo. Nope! Hmm. The rats are just so innocent. No, they know what they're doing. Alright. So, there's actually a secret here that I missed for a while. It's a little counterintuitive how you get to it. You have to go as high up this ladder as you can, and then fall off the screen. So you have enough momentum to get past those fans and come in here. And there's a, uh... I think Chester's in here, maybe. Oh, man. I'm gonna switch to the phase locket just in case. I do not like dealing with fans in a spike-filled area. Yeah, there he is. Alright, this thing is really cool. The propeller dagger. It's not the most useful... I mean, like everything else, it's situationally useful. But, uh, it's the only... it's the closest thing this game has to, like, a double jump or an air dash. Uh, I haven't been fishing in a while. Let's see what the uh, the sky seas have for me. Oh, I guess that was health. You don't see those very often. Usually, it's either a goldfish or a trouple. <gasps> Street 
streaming is such a big thing these days, it seems very important to promoting games. Yeah, I mean... It, it just depends, really. I mean, some games... Some games stream better than others. You know, I mean, some games have become hugely successful because of streaming. I mean, I think if, if it weren't for people, like, making YouTube videos and stuff, then Minecraft wouldn't be nearly the, uh, the sensation that it is. And, you know, that's, that's a specific kind of game that, uh, appeals to a very large segment of the, of the population. Like, a lot of people, uh, like watching that kind of thing. Whereas Shovel Knight, it's more of a, uh, like, every experience is pretty much the same. I mean, obviously, the way I play it is different than the way everyone else plays it. But, um, like, I, I don't think YouTube and Twitch would have quite the impact for Shovel Knight that it did for Minecraft. I really, I enjoy really big official streams where the chat is going apeshit. Yeah, I usually ignore the chat on the big streams, to be honest. I mean, it seems like most of the time, it's just like a bunch of face emoticons that I, that I don't get. So, uh, I don't, I don't really get anything out of the chat room in those cases. Okay. Whew. I just like it sometimes due to gift. Yeah, I don't know what gift is either. Oh crap. The greater internet fuckwad theory. Yeah, you have to uh, expound on that theory. Is that the old internet plus anonymity equals douchebag equation? Because I do agree with that. To an extent. I mean, I, I think a lot of people who are, who are assholes on the internet would be assholes whether they were anonymous or not. And you know, there are a huge number of people who are assholes even though they use their real name prominently. Which kind of blows my mind. I mean, it's mostly like teenagers who don't realize how their behavior is going to impact their life later on. When, you know, employers Google search them as soon as they apply and see, you know, all these, these horrible offensive comments that they made. This is one of the very few streams I watch and keep chat up at the same time. Well, thanks, Missy, Missy Shade. That's, uh,. It's a good vote of approval for both me and the chat room. Norm normal person plus anonymity equals a complete asshole. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know about that. N most normal people are still normal on the internet. And a lot of people who are assholes are assholes on the internet. And that's just kind of the, the way it is. Damn it! But, uh... I think it is true in a lot of cases that that being anonymous makes people act ways they wouldn't act otherwise. I like the carnage on big streams. Sometimes shit they say makes me raffle. I mean, occasionally, I guess. I don't know. That's another uh, good thing about Giant Bomb. Their community is really cool. Like, even when there are a ton of people chatting, it's usually pretty... Uh, you know, it, it adds a lot to the uh, to the experience. Like the other day, there was a uh, a big three-hour Mario Party stream uh, for subscribers, and uh, it's hilarious. And watching people react in the chat definitely improved that experience. But you know, Giant Bomb is just a, a really cool community. For the most part, there are there are definitely trolls in there, but most of the like most of the paying subscribers are, uh, you know, they, they keep, they keep their, uh, douchebaggery in check. Forgot apart, plus massive audience. Well, that's just going to be the law of averages. Like, when, when you have 50,000 people in a chat room, the odds that, that you're going to see people acting like, like, assholes goes up exponentially. Crap. See? 
I told you, these, these rats are tricky. They're not so innocent. They float just the right place to totally screw you over. Oh right, this part. Dang. <laughs> I forgot about this. This is scary. Okay. <sighs> See, you would never be able to do this with Rogue Legacy's pogo controls. I would have I would have fallen in this area a billion times. The giant bomb a lot about Nintendo, like Nintendo stuff. No, not really. I mean they they cover pretty much everything. I mean a lot of the games I play uh, I play because I watch them play it on Giant Bomb. Like, like they, they, they do quick looks, which is basically them playing a new game that just came out for like 20 to 20 minutes to an hour or so. Just giving like their initial first impressions of the game. And, uh, you know, talking about it. And, uh, that, that's where I discovered, uh, well, it's not where I discovered, but that's where I saw Abyss Odyssey played for the first time. And that's what made me want to play it. But yeah, I mean, they do definitely do Nintendo stuff. The example I pointed out in that during Nintendo's E3, the, the volume of racist and sexist comments and general hatred. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, like I said, that's, that's the law of averages, you know. 90% of people are assholes, and when there's a huge number of people chatting in the same place, you're, you're going to see more of those assholes. The percentage probably isn't that high. I'm being pessimistic. Yeah, the sunset is beautiful. Especially, you know, from this vantage point. Gyroscopic jester, that's a pretty good insult. Well, I'm kind of here to be entertained. Alright, this boss is not too difficult. The level's harder than the boss, to be honest. You just have to make sure, uh... The biggest risk is being pushed off the edge. When, uh... When he uses his air-blowing attacks, like like that. Fortunately, I was on the, uh... On the correct side of him. Alright, you kinda have to, uh... Dang it. You have to be careful around these bombs, too. Oh right, fudge. I forgot about this part. Reminds me of uh, the Bowser boss in Yoshi's Island. When he uh, drops the huge... The huge fireballs that destroy part of the stage. Man, I wish I had an airship backing me up. This fight would be a lot more fair then. Why is Shovel Knight going to the Tower of Fate? Because... He has to uh, rescue Shield Knight, and the Enchantress uh, has her in the Tower of Fate. So I have to go confront the Enchantress and uh, and rescue Shield Knight. Alright, there's going to be a ton of enemies here. Since this is the last dream sequence of the game. Listen here. You need to stop throwing those spears. Isn't the shield knight dead? No, she's not dead. She's just, uh... She's been captured. Alright, that is the last meal ticket. So I will go pay a visit to the gastronomer, drop off these music notes, and proceed to the Tower of Fate. Oh yeah, I guess I can go ahead and do the Fridge of Flight level. Hey Goatman. Better learn how to fly, ha ha ha. Well, I didn't learn how to fly, but... I learned how to, uh, air dash, kind of. <gasps> oh, 
raised her hand if you didn't see that one coming. Doesn't that mean that she has been captured for many years or something? Why didn't he try to rescue her before? I don't think it's been that long, has it? I don't know, I wasn't really paying attention. Yeah, this, is, this isn't really a game you play for a story. Or it's not a game I play for a story. Phew! I thought I was going to get electrocuted and fall into the bottomless pit. Uh, oh yeah. What makes that dagger dash different from the punch? Well, the punch... It kind of, uh... It's kind of drawn to the the sand piles. Like you don't have to be like when you use the punch, it's basically enough to go through exactly one of the sand piles. And the dagger dash is it's a little more flexible, it's a little more fluid. It's, it's not quite as uh as digital as the dust knuckle. The story in this game is so unrealistic. I know Kasha. Jeez. The writers are just insulting our intelligence. I mean, Knight could never really kill all these things with a shovel. What do they think we are? Seven music sheets. Holy crap. So yeah, still, still missing a few. I probably won't collect all of them in this playthrough. Alright, see you later, Missy Shade. Thanks for hanging out. Alright, our health is full, and I'm sure I have enough gold to get full magic by now. 4,000, a pittance. 6,000, I scoff at your price. 8,000, ha! Alright, we are dressed to the nines. Or I am. With my fancy, shiny, sparkly armor. All the shovel upgrades. Shovels are a histor historical weapon used by a class of knight who protected common folk. Well, that sounds made up, but uh, my history knowledge is not is not what it could be. Uh, okay, so two levels in the Tower of Fate. Definitely only two. There's not going to be more than that because you know I've never played a Mega Man game before. It's kind of like a uh, a remix of the uh, of the title theme. It's pretty cool. History is for suckers, anyway. Oh, hey, Pinfeldorf, what's up? A lot of uh, a lot of names I haven't seen in a while in the stream tonight. Welcome, all of you. I don't know if history is for suckers. I mean, I do enjoy history. Because, you know, I don't want to be doomed to repeat it and all that. <gasps> Dang. I'm on to you rats. Aw, oh, man. Oh, okay. This is a nice safe spot to stand and cheese this griffin with my fireballs. Hey! You're not supposed to drop a bomb, you're supposed to drop a chicken. Don't you know how it works? Didn't you get the memo? Been wanting to join a stream since I saw you were back, but the internet outage and such. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you have the internet back. That's, uh... It's an important thing to have.
think I'll leave the checkpoint there, since, you know, see in the tower, all of the checkpoints are like gigantic gems. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll get the first one, just to see how much it actually gives me. See, that gave me like a thousand just from that one checkpoint. I'll probably reach the next checkpoint before I die. Famous last words. Man, these fish, they always catch me by surprise. Alright. I probably... I'll probably be okay. Yeah, this this won't go all the way down. Alright. That ghost thing, Scarfy, is going to be an issue, so... I'll deal with it the old-fashioned way. And by the old-fashioned way, I mean, uh, with magic. Hmm. I've messed, I've messed up the timing on this before plenty of times and gotten crushed. I, I forget if I want to go across when it's going down or coming up. I think going down is the safest route. Because if I, if I time it wrong the other direction, then I'm going to, uh, I want to get crushed. You really don't need the money in the last level. Well, there are multiple stages to the uh, to the Tower of Fate, so theoretically, I could I could need the money, but I mean, I don't need the money because I have everything I need. Quote an overused joke by an old school less player, surprise fetch. I don't know if that's overused. I don't think I, uh, don't think I've heard it that many times. I do believe I used that joke in the uh, Splatterhouse playthrough, though, at one point. I believe I referred to it as a chocolate zombie surprise fish. The only reason I remember that is because somebody actually made me fan art of that saying, which is, was really cool. That was the only fan art I've ever gotten. I mean, not that I deserve fan art or anything, but I just thought, uh, I just thought that was pretty cool. Don't think that person watches anymore. I really hate these, uh... I don't know what you would call these things. They're like ghost samurai or something. Oh crap, I should have switched my, uh, my propeller thing there, but I was okay. Hmm, should probably see if there's a turkey in that, in that serving, serving container. Was that a platter? A dish? Covered dish? Yeah, it's a turkey. Awesome. Ugh, you jerk. That guy was out for blood. DC is known for his catchphrases. Hey, I'm known for my hilarious catchphrases too. Like, for example, what? That's a good one. That that is a classic Duke of the Bump uh, catchphrase there. <laughs> what? Phew. And also, that's another one. Phew. And that is a uh, a celebrated Duke of the Bump catchphrase. Alright, this area is dark the entire time, which kind of sucks, but you can kind of use the rain to figure out where the, uh, where the pits are. Like, you can see, like, the rain splashing on the, or splashing off of the, uh, the platform I'm on. Well, you will occasionally see platforms where there is no splash, and you know not to jump there. Jiminy Jellikers! That's another classic Duke of the Bump catchphrase. I say that one all the time. Jiminy Jellikers! Oh rats, I died. Jiminy Jellikers. You probably don't remember it because it's from a super old LP that isn't on my YouTube channel anymore, but I've definitely said that one. 
Why am I killing this guy? Pride, I guess. Oh man. People talking up a storm in the chat room. Uh, without Duke, we wouldn't have any words to ask people to re reiterate what they said or further explain. I don't think Duke has any catchphrases. Uh, my favorite Duke of the Bone catchphrase is the sudden gasp whenever something unfortunate happens or almost happens. Oh yeah, the, the gasp. Uh, that's a trademark of mine. Your oldest were Mega Man 2 and Pugsy, weren't they? No, those were... Uh, Those were way after I started LPing. The first game I ever LPed was, uh... I don't know where this joke is going. Yes, Mega Man 2 was the first game I LPed. I like to eat my lunch from a Duke LP, though. Yeah, but I can't take credit for that. that that's, uh... That's technically Satan's catchphrase, not mine. I just kind of, uh... I borrowed it. <laughs> that's Satan. He's uh, he's a real, he's a real card. He's a real jokester. Yeah, it was more the game than me. I co-opted it. All right, I think, I think there's another Black Knight fight in this level. Yeah, there he is. Hey, buddy. Oh yeah, it's the Enchantress. Wait, the Black Knight doesn't work for the Enchantress? This game is going some crazy places. Holy crap. Black Knight is supercharged now. Oh man, he reflected my fireball. He shouldn't be able to do that. The enemies are turning my tactics against me. And he has wings now. Great. And I wish I got wings. All I have is a stupid propeller thing. I guess I, uh... I guess I should have drunk a Red Bull before I started, huh? LOL. Man, this guy's a real jerk. Look at that crap. There we go. Dot dot dot. Hmm, the plot thickens. I know Duke has an LP of Oregon Trail from 1997. Yeah, that's true. We, uh... I didn't have any video recording technology back then, so the whole thing is just on an audio cassette. I had one of those little portable tape recorders, and I just narrate the whole thing. It's not very, uh, not very enjoyable. <laughs> I bet Satan will be sympathetic to IP theft. Yeah, probably. I mean, we all know. That, uh, the music piracy is just caused by teenagers listening to Satan. Pretty sure I read that in a magazine once. Alright, this is the level I died a billion times on. Well, I died kind of a lot on the last level, too, in my first playthrough. 
I figure which of the which of these directions is best. Left would have been best, but I think I can get by without those gems. So why are they keeping the shield girl in the tower? Well, Koss, you just have to wait for the uh, the surprise twist. I'm not going to spoil it. And I'm lucky I didn't get crushed there. I would have thought those moving platforms would have been uh, the death of me. Right, let's use my phase lock just to make sure I don't get knocked off. Oop! Dust knuckle time. Yeah! Damn it, Kasha, you just spoiled it. Uh, I mean, Shield Knight might be the Enchantress, I don't know. That sure would be a crazy twist, though. Oops. Are we getting Shama Llama up in here? I don't know what that means. I don't know why I broke that, that checkpoint either. That was probably unnecessary. I did not know, I just guessed. Well, Kasha, you are, uh... Uh... Congratulations. I think that was about the point that I figured it out too. I used to think that uh, if you went all the way to the bottom of the screen with this thing, you would fall and die, but it actually stops when you get to the bottom, which is very helpful for getting through this area specifically. I hate this guy. I got blown off that platform by him so many times. Alright, I think, uh... Hmm, I forget if there's another one of those guys or not. I'm gonna keep the Warhorn equipped just in case. <gasps> I went a little too far. Oh, and Night Shyamalan, I get it. The conversation between Shovel Knight and TBK pretty much confirmed that, yeah. Took that guy out like a pro. Look how huge your hand gets when you use the dust knuckle. Reminds me of like a battle toads attack. Pow! Crap. So you have to be careful with the pogo attack here, because if you uh if you're not watching out, you'll pogo right to your Right to your death. I didn't see that block above me. Oh wait, I know. Alchemist coin. Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> that thing actually, like, it gives you more money than would normally drop from the enemies when you use, when you kill it with the alchemist coin. Man, this armor is so fancy. I should have been using this armor a long time ago. Let's go ahead and grab that magic. I have to say, this is the best game I've ever played where you walk on platforms of frozen rainbow bird vomit. Of all the games I've ever played with that feature, this is definitely the best. Not taking any chances with that guy. Alright, so the best way to deal with this is to jump on this side of the bird platform and kind of lure lure him out. Yeah, there we go. Because if you're standing on that side of the birds, you can't get blown to your death. I mean, you could if you like if you jump or something, I guess. Music note. 
Yeah, I'll leave that checkpoint there. That is a uh, that's a good checkpoint to have. <gasps> because the uh, the preceding area was pretty dangerous. Aw oh, man, auto scroll. No. My other famous catchphrase. No. I was really mad when Star Wars ripped me off. Don't even pay me any royalties or anything. <gasps> Got it. Dust knuckle. Oh man, I still have to hit these things twice? That's a bummer. I wish I could get blown to death. Blown to my death. Is what I said. Blown to my death. Just to clarify. Die quite a few times on this one too. It's a little, uh, it's a little intimidating, especially if you're, man, on the no relic playthrough. This was really scary because I didn't have the dust knuckle to, uh, to get through that as easily as I did. <laughs> that sounds less than optimal, Duke. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't, uh, I don't recommend it. Shit, Duke's already this far in the game. Well, I also streamed this on Monday. I, I streamed through like half the game on Monday. Alright, is it boss rush time? I think... I think it might be. Unless there's another boss I'm forgetting. Heck yes, boss rush! <laughs> I get it. Cause he's treasure knight. He says it's rich. And that's pretty good. Yeah, these guys are talking pretty big considering I killed all of them. Or I defeated all of them. Duke, you can kill Gear Knight with one use of the gear spell. You mean Tinker Knight? Is that true or, or are you just uh, riffing on Mega Man? In his phase one? Oh, well, I should try that. That Polar Knight doesn't give a fuck. Alright, Plague Knight first, looks like. It's a little easier. Actually, all the bosses are a little easier in the boss rush than their original form. Because uh, the terrain is just perfectly flat. You don't have the... Uh, like, when you when you originally fought Plague Knight, the, uh, you know, the terrain was all uneven. There were, like, boxes stacked everywhere. So this time it's, uh, it's a little simpler. Now, in the normal playthrough, every time you defeat a boss in the boss rush, uh, it drops a turkey. And in New Game Plus, it only drops a turkey every other time. So it makes it a little bit more difficult in, in G+. Is the order that the bosses go random? I'm pretty sure it is. Like, it seems like, uh... It seems like... I fought, uh... Sometimes I fight Polar Knight first. Sometimes I fight, uh... Tinker Knight first. I think that was the first time I've ever gotten... Uh, Plague Knight first. I definitely fought Spectre Knight first. A couple times. So yeah, I think it's mostly random. There, there might be, like, a preference for fighting certain bosses before other bosses. I'm not sure, though. Alright, so I think it's going to drop a, a magic pot now, as well as a turkey. Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to uh, I'm gonna have to try out this gear thing. Oop! It is absolutely true. Thanks for the heads up, Pinfeldorf. That's awesome. That is a, uh, a callback to Mega Man 2. Where you can kill uh, Metal Man with the uh, the Metal Gear in one hit, 
or two hits if you're playing on on difficult. What do I want equipped? I guess I don't need anything specific for the rest of this fight. Man, that would have made it way easier to get the uh, defeat a boss without taking any, any damage achievement if I knew about that. Aw, man. My perfect record. Ruined. Ow. Excellent. Oh, the, the metal blade, I mean, not, not the metal gear. Hey, jerk. Out of mana. Or mana. However you prefer to pronounce it. I'm out of it. I usually say mana. Mana always just sounded really weird to me. I know mana is how they say it in World of Warcraft. Because that's how they say it in Hearthstone. It always, uh... It's always a little... A little weird in my ears. Why is Treasure Knight so shit? Well, he was uh, he was blinded by his greed. So yeah, this fight's pretty much the same because these two platforms appear to help you to help you defeat Spectre Knight. I forget if it gets dark. Yep, I guess it does get dark. That's interesting. Man, it took me so long to beat the boss rush the first time I beat this game. I used to be terrible at fighting these bosses. But, you know, eventually you fight them enough times, their patterns are pretty much the same every time, and you just learn them. Mana is bread, mana is magic essence. Yeah, pretty much. Wait, does mana literally mean bread? I thought it was just any kind of, uh... I mean, I've only heard the phrase used in, like, mana from heaven, which I thought was just, uh... kind of a generic term for, like, miracle food. The first time I went into the boss rush, I was panicking so bad, I thought I, w I would be stuck there forever. Yeah, me too. I even posted to that effect on Twitter. I said, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to beat this boss rush. But, I kept at it, and eventually I made it. So, just go to show, if I can learn to be good at a video game, so can you, probably. Dang it. Ow. Oh, I don't have enough... Mana for my alchemist coin. That's a bummer. Alright, keeping an eye on my health, just just to be safe. But, uh... Should be okay. Actually, I didn't have that much trouble with this the first time I did it. It was New Game Plus that I thought was really going to break me. Because with this, you can kind of brute force your way through it, because it gives you a turkey after every single boss, and, uh... You can kind of just keep at it. In New Game Plus, it does not heal you every time, and, uh... It's pretty difficult. I think it's unleavened, unsweetened bread. Oh, well. I know very little about, uh... About that sort of thing. Now this boss fight is way easier because A, you don't have the holes at, e at either edge of the screen to fall to your death, and I don't think the uh, the cannonball attack even happens in the boss rush. It's, I think it's just bombs every time. 
so it makes this fight way easier than it, than uh, it normally is. Ow. Oh, that's right, I still don't have enough mana. Oh well. Hey, just drop, what's up? Alright, here's this game's big moral decision. Do I save them or don't I? Uh, what the hell? I've beaten the game without saving them before, and nothing special really happens. There's no, like, alternate ending or anything. See, I rescue them just so I can gloat at how much of, of how much of a badass I am. Oh hey, I don't think you said that before. Okay, so I guess the uh, the gold armor actually does do something. Yeah, well, we'll see. Spectre Knight. You know, I really don't think you have room to talk, Blake Knight. No thanks. So Blake Knight is the only one who's still kind of a piece of shit after you rescue them. Wait, what? Uh. Oh. That's weird. It, like, it glitched out because... I guess because I scrolled off the screen before I rescued them. Oh, look at that. A level that wasn't on the map. I certainly never saw that in a video game before. For shuffleery. Now this is straight out of Mega Man uh, as well. I was going to say Mega Man 2, but uh, I think there's a room like that in multiple Mega Man games. Of course, you couldn't kill them this easily in Mega Man. Well, you could if you in Mega Man Two if you use the bubble lead. I aced that room, nerds. Well, Pinfeldorf, you sure showed me. I am, in fact, a nerd. That is a statement I cannot argue with. So yeah, there's like a billion music notes here, just so you know. You want a medal for that? I sure do, says Pinfeldorf. Sigh. You can go left there. <laughs> Did you not know that? Or are you, uh, are you being a jokester? See, strangely enough, I didn't think to go left in Pride More Keep, but I did think to go left on this level. I didn't have to look that up. I, I, I don't know why it occurred to me here, but not, not in Pride More Keep.
So yeah, I already got those music, music notes, so I don't need to go back for them. I should have checked that fishing spot. You know, I rarely fish, because it seems like it's usually just one of the trapples, and I always have two healing potions stocked, so finding the tra trapples doesn't really help me. I mean, really, gold wouldn't help me, and, uh... And the fish that gives you health wouldn't help me here either, so there's really no reason for me to fish. There might be something unique. Pretty sure I fished that spot before, and uh, it was just a normal fish. So, like the tutorial, this is another checkpoint that you cannot break. Which is kind of interesting. Uh, it's kind of green and rainy, but, uh, I guess it's beautiful, in a way. Dun-dun-dun! The secret is revealed. Dang. That was a pretty epic intro. I have to hand it to them. That was, uh... Oh yeah, that's right, I can actually break these. There's, uh, an achievement for reflecting a certain number of enemy projectiles. This is a good fight to, uh, to rack up some of those. Reflections. It is death if you fall, by the way. Just in case, uh, in case you weren't sure. Boss is not easy. I've died quite a few times on this boss, and not just in my first playthrough. Jeez! That kind of, uh, took me by surprise. <gasps> oh man, she summoned she summoned those right before I fell to my death. That was pinpoint perfect timing. Thanks Enchantress. Or should I say, thanks Shield Knight. That was close. Oh jeez. Yeah, she does not want to be where I can hit her. <gasps> Anyone tried Defiance? Nope, haven't played it. That's a game where there's like a TV show at the tight end of the game, right? Seems like an interesting concept. Dang it, I've reflected all three of those before. I know it's possible. Crap. <laughs> All right, come on, lady. Just delaying the inevitable. At least, at least come up here and fight fairly. I can't do... Well, I, I guess I could be throwing, like, anchors at her or something when she's down below me. It'd be tough to hit her, though. Nope. 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 Mmm. <clears throat> Do, you know you can use a fishing rod to hit her, right? Uh, I mean, it makes sense. I never really, uh, never really tried. There we go.
I mean, it seems like the fishing rod would just be really uh, slow and inefficient. And see, the problem with the fishing rod is that it kind of locks you into that that position, and uh, if I like, if I don't, if I can't cancel out of it quickly enough, it's pretty easy for me to get hit and fall to my death. So, I, I, I'm more inclined to try the anchor and see uh, see if I can hit her with that. Of course, I don't need to use the anchor when she's up here. I hope so, I guess. <gasps> Civ 5 was pretty much a step back in every respect from Civ 4. Yeah, that's what I hear. Civ 5 is the only Civ game I ever played, though. So I don't really have a reference point. Nice. I told you this boss was tough. Alright, come on, make some more bricks for me. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to hit her with the anchor either. Like, the fishing rod, I mean, I I'm, t I'm too scared to try it to be honest. Seems like a recipe for disaster. I just played it to zone out while watching streams or whatever. I like listening to streams in the background while I play games. Like when I was trying for the difficult achievements in this game, I would usually put on a stream or a podcast or something. Yeah, you know, maybe the, uh... The heavy armor would actually help me out on this fight because I wouldn't be knocked around quite as easily. Knocked into the pits. <gasps> I did not mean to start pogoing there. That was a bad interpretation of my controls game. I can see how Civ would be a good good game for uh, playing while you do something else. It's pretty relaxing. It's turn-based. Not too difficult if you play it on the easier difficulties. Ow. There we go. Duke reflect the vertical shots back at her. Hmm. It didn't occur to me that that would work. Playing Borderlands 2 while watching the stream right now. BO2 was a lot of fun multiplayer. Yeah, it was. That's a great game. <laughs> my gold's still down here. That's funny. Screw you. I'm getting my gold. Okay, I'll catch you. Oh no, when the amulet shattered... It summoned phase two of the boss. All right, this fight is really cool. And the game is nice enough to give you an invisible checkpoint after phase one of the boss. So, uh, so if I do die here, I will have to redo phase one. Oh, uh, there we go. It's like, uh, Lost Vikings, using Olaf's shield to jump higher than I would be able to normally.
Ooh, I've taken a lot of damage already. I might have to actually pop a potion on this one. Which, I don't feel too bad about, since I went through most of this game potionless. I'm not gonna get over there fast enough. <sighs> oh crap! That was, that was a bad place to be standing. I'm gonna go ahead and use one of my potions now, just to be safe. I don't think any of my relics would really help here. Maybe the anchor. But if I remember correctly, uh, yeah. Relics just bounce off of her. In this form. Or bounce off of whatever this thing is. This magical force. Alright, I have another potion if I really need it. So... Keep that in mind. At the moment, the biggest danger is falling to my death. Oh crap. Look at all these holes. Should probably put- oh my god. I don't think there's ever been this many holes when I was- when I was in this fight before. There she- there she uh... One of them reappeared. I wanna bring out my phase locket just to be safe. I mean it, it won't protect me from falling to my death, but it might protect me from getting knocked into the bottomless pit. There we go. Wow, that was rude. Interrupt my dialogue. Oh hey, it's Black Knight. He was a good guy all along. And that's the end. I really like this ending cutscene. It goes to each of the locations. The Rightful King returns. There's a little vignette for each one. Didn't I play Nuclear Throne? Yeah, I did. I really like that game. Travel Pond. Makes sense that the dancer would show up there. Let the celebrations begin. It's like, uh, it was one of the Sonic games where at the end it does like a cool little remix that, you know, ties all the music together. <laughs> Spectre Knight playing Mona's game. Is there a different ending for New Game Plus? Nah, it's the same. It took all of his treasure. Well, all except one. Yeah, I guess it was Sonic 1. Advanced Potion class. There's the, uh... The Alchemist from Town, Plague Knight. The Jekyll and Hyde monster. Have I played any Paradox Grand Strategy games? Nope! Those games are... A level beyond anything... Anything my brain can deal with. All of the wandering travelers you fought. Working together as a team. Oh yeah, I didn't know Hat Guy was there too. I guess he counts as a wandering traveler. Do I own any? No, I don't think so. 
Well, all the ladies love Propeller Knight, I guess, for some reason. I thought he was kind of a jerk. Tinker Knight! See, he just wanted to make cool stuff. <laughs> he made a little toy version of the boss for the kids. That's awesome. Polar Knight. Off by his lonesome. Zubas, that's the name of that, that character. I don't know what he's from. I know he's from something, though. Black Knight rescued me. And roll credits. Well, thanks for thanks for watching, everyone. I'm glad I got to show off this whole game. Jake Kaufman, that's Vert. He's responsible for most of the soundtrack. He has a scrap design from Street Fighter 2. Oh, really? Huh. I thought he was from another game or a cartoon or something. The best friends found the scrap character art and started jamming him into Kickstarter games. Oh, really? That's interesting. But yeah, this game is really awesome. Uh, Eat 4 Entertainment are a uh, software localizer. Humble Bundle, of course. Don't recognize a lot of these names. I guess these are like the big Kickstarter backers. If you backed it at a certain level, you uh, got your name in the credits in addition to your portrait in the Hall of Champions. I assume. Chris Kaufman is uh, Jake Kaufman's wife or girlfriend or something. She has a cool podcast called Noise Channel uh, that's a bunch of chiptune music. Highly recommend checking it out. Nugget Kaufman is their dog. She uh, she brings him up in the in the show. Oh, but maybe those weren't the Kickstarter backers. Maybe those were just the special thanks. Oh, is Mojang there? I missed him. Or I missed them. Oh yeah, and see how many times I died. Damn, I died three times in the Lost City? What a noob. Didn't die nearly as many times in the Tower of Fate as I thought I would though. Died quite a few times in the, uh, at the boss. Totalized lost 23? That's not bad. That's a far sight away from them over a hundred times I died the first time I played. And I didn't find all the items, but I wasn't really going for it. Oh, it was a bit lower than the portrait backers, okay. Says Namagem. Thank you, Lock Cl Yacht Club Games. This is such a good game. My, my game of the year so far has a good chance of being my game of the year by the end of the year. Yay! Shield Knight made it out alive! Thank goodness. I was with you, Kasha. I was really sad. Until the, uh... Until the little post credit sequence. Supposedly there's an update coming where you can play a Shield Knight. 
but I have no idea how how she would work with the uh, with the physics of the game or with the uh, with the mechanics of the game. Did they make anything else? Nope. This is their first game. Well, their first game as Yacht Club Games. I'm sure team members have worked on different games in the past. But, uh, but yeah, this has been Shovel Knight. She didn't make it out alive, though. They died beside the campfire together. Shut up, Pinfeldorf. That's not true. Don't listen to Pinfeldorf. He's a troll. They're working on DLC where you get to play as other knights coming never. I'm sure I'm sure it'll come sooner or later. It was it was one of the Kickstarter stretch goals, right? The uh, the additional play modes. I'm sure they'll they'll come out with something. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, I've had a blast playing through this again. DLC will be Plague Knight, Royal Knight, and I can't remember the third one. Oh, is Shield Knight not going to be playable? I might have been misinformed. All right, well, uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to stream next. Uh, I might do uh, a few more FTL playthroughs since it's been a while since I tried since I played FTL. Pieces just achievements, right? Yeah, it's just uh, just a fancy name for the achievements, and uh, I'll show you which ones I don't have. Finish the game without dying. Finish the game without spending any money. Finish the game without falling into a bottomless pit. And finish the game within an hour and 30 minutes. So, still not sure if I'm going to get those. Probably not. If I do, I might stream it. But yeah, uh, thanks for watching everyone. And uh, keep an eye on the Twitter feed and the Steam group. And subscribe on Twitch if you want email updates when I go live. And I'll see you all soon. Night everyone.